Well, the sneaker industry was on shaky ground last year, dealing with release dates and constant flux to brands suffering from shutdowns in factories across Asia. But despite those slowdowns, the race is on as sneaker sales are expected to accelerate in the coming years. Here with more and to talk about that and trends in the industry is Eddie Liu, Goat Group's co-founder and CEO, along with Yahoo Finance's Danny Romero. Thanks so much to you both for being here. Uh, Eddie, I want to start with you. So you have multiple locations, many across the globe, something like 13. What has the last year been like for you as far as sales and being able to navigate all of the supply chain issues that have come up? Because sneaker brands were hit hard. Hey, great to be here. Thanks for having me. And the great thing about Goat is that we don't just have one seller where we depend on supply. We have over 700,000 sellers around the world that have supply on hand. So you're always going to find what you want on Goat. And it's not just this year's styles that are impacted by some of the supply chain issues. We have styles from this year plus past catalogs. And so, you know, if you want a sneaker from five years ago, 10 years ago, we have that on Goat. Um, and so that's it's been um, a record breaking year for Goat. And Eddie, it's Danny. So from the data that you collected, you know, Nike was one of your top selling brands, but Nike was one of those brands that also suffered from supply chain disruptions. Do you think those brands will rethink or reconsider doing business somewhere else? Do you see that in the future? In terms of um, supply chain, like I mentioned, I mean, given that we sell in so many different countries, um, we didn't see as much of a supply chain impact as some other companies. Um, and um, given that international is such a big part of our, our growth, it, there were so many different kind of, and, and every country had its own top sneaker. And um, what we saw was it wasn't just Nike. I mean, yes, Nike was a big hit in English speaking countries like the US, the um, in Canada, the UK, but in the Middle East, for example, Yeezys were the, the top sneaker of the year. And so in Saudi Arabia and the Emirates, Yeezys were really um, sought after. In Japan, our top selling sneaker was a New Balance. So I think you're starting to see um, trends where it's not just being Nike dominated, but of course, Nike is a very important part of the ecosystem. And, and you know, also another thing is we're seeing that the secondary market is now becoming the primary market. Can you talk to us a little bit about how that is you know, the evolution of that? So of course, um, with sneakers and apparel in general, you have primary sales, but once those products sell out in store, you, there's just, where does the consumer go to buy products? And now that um, there are companies like Goat out there, we're seeing that Goat's just becoming kind of the best place to buy sneakers and fashion on the internet because it's the first place you go to. You don't want to deal with kind of not being able to, you're going to a store and not being able to find product or going to a manufacturer's site and it being sold out. Um, so we're seeing that our customers are just coming to us directly. Um, and you mentioned the primary start as well. We're starting to work with some of the best brands in the industry who, who sell directly on Goat right next to um, our network of 700,000 sellers. So for example, Balenciaga, Versace, Alexander McQueen all sell directly on Goat. So the consumer gets the best of both worlds, both from the primary and the secondary market. You know, uh, Eddie, good to see you again. I'm wondering if you are uh, looking at getting into the NFT market there at GOAT when it comes to sneakers. I know StockX is doing it already. Shaquille O'Neal is looking at the possibility. And, and how would that work since sneakers, you either want to wear them, they're very tangible, right? So how would a digital asset of sneakers work into the equation? Hey, Alexis. Well, the, our digital lives are being increasingly important. And um, it's definitely something that we look at. We actually started um, this kind of cross-section between the digital and physical with our Black Friday campaign. We called it Spaces, where our consumers had were dropped into virtually themed worlds where they could access our products in different settings. So we're already on um, the, the kind of digital physical train, and um, definitely stay tuned for more. And Eddie, want to you know just touch on the fact that there has been such a huge rise in luxury brands getting into the sneaker market. You name the brand, top brand, Chanel, Balenciaga, as you mentioned, they all have a sneaker, and that's attracting like my daughters to wear sneakers more than they have before. So I'm wondering, are more and more women coming into the sneaker house as well, if you will? Great question, and definitely. I mean, when we started seven years ago in 2015, we were primarily a limited edition kind of Jordan and Yeezy marketplace where it was predominantly males. 
as we've incorporated luxury and fashion, and like you mentioned, a lot of the luxury houses have amazing sneakers and collaborations with some of the top sneaker companies such as Nike and Adidas. So we're seeing that the female demographic represents 40% of our consumer base now and growing. I want to step away from sneakers for a moment and ask you about these so-called hype bags that seem to have become even bigger uh, than sneakers for some folks, these cross-body bags that guys are wearing. I mean, they're pretty high-end. Gucci, Hermes has theirs. What's that market looking like for GOAT? Definitely on the accessory side, um, it's one of our fastest growing markets. Um, Apparel and accessories have grown so much year over year, and we're continuing to invest um, time and product into um, giving these options to our consumers. So we're excited. I mean, fashion spans all genders. It spans, um, you know, we say that a lot of our products are unisex these days. So um, continue to um, be excited about the options for our female and male consumers. Okay, Eddie Liu, GOATS Group co-founder and CEO. Thanks so much for stopping by along with Yahoo Finance's Danny Romero.